First and foremost, I would like to welcome all of you to today's session on measure the success of your email marketing campaign. My name is Kapil Nakra and I'm one of the co-founders of Digital Vidya. And today we have with us uh, Nitya Nan Ramakrishnan, also known as Niti. And uh, Niti is actually uh, taking care of the digital marketing initiatives from almost eight years now. And uh, uh, welcome Niti. Uh, in fact, a few months back, uh, we decided, Niti, along with Digital Vidya, we've decided to offer digital email marketing trainings to Digital Vidya community. And uh, in this month, we are actually launching our first program in Mumbai. Uh, just to give you a little brief of all the interaction that I have with Niti so far, uh, believe me, in all the interaction that I have so far, I've always left amazed with the kind of depth of knowledge Niti possesses in this area and the simplicity with which he communicates that. I hope you would be left with the similar uh, kind of a mindset uh, by the end of this session. So uh, uh, without taking any further time, uh, I'll hand it over to Niti just to set the logistics uh, of the, today's event. Uh, all of you are in the muted state right now. So if you have any question or concern, just type it down in the question section. We will have this session for about 30 to 40 minutes and then we'll take up the questions. And uh, so the topic is very, very interesting. It's measure the success of your email marketing campaign. Like emails are actually uh, globally, there are more than 2.2 billion people using emails, twice as much as people were using Facebook actually. And it's, it's probably the oldest marketing technique in the digital marketing space and it's, it's still there very much there and it's being used commonly across various verticals. So uh, today's session is about email marketing and in particular about how to measure the success of your email marketing campaign. So uh, Niti, over to you. You can start the session now. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Kapil, for that uh, great introduction. <clears throat> I uh, am a marketer and uh, I also possess a lot of passion in uh, what I do, in anything that I do. Uh, right from the searches that is important for a marketer, right from identifying uh, a certain bucket of people to actually sending across a message that is probably conveying the, the right type of words, images, and probably the feeling. Because uh, one of the things that I've understood as a marketer, we are very, very powerful. And I think uh, most of the marketers in and around would agree with me that it is uh, indeed a powerful job because we decide how consumers behave. We decide what they actually have to possess or what they want, what their needs would be, what their tomorrow would look like, how uh, uh, their day-to-day -day activities would uh, really revolve around or what kind of things that they will need uh, in order to uh, you know, uh, run their life. So these are some of the things that I've noticed and and actually I treat this job as a very powerful job because the words that we use, the, the images that we use and uh, the promotions that we carry on um, in, in different mediums is very, very important. Uh, and uh, we are actually implanting a thought in, uh, in the minds of people. Um, coming back to the webinars topic. So that's, that's been my uh, job and I uh, 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 love to do this. <clears throat> All right. Um, we, we were looking can at the measurement you? and when Kapil told me that this is going to be the show. Sure. Uh, Niti, can you just put on your uh, webcam as well, if that's possible? I think oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I thought we... The audio was breaking, it, breaking up, not to see me, but actually uh, get, the, get the material that, uh, that I'm going to actually uh, share right now. Uh, I'm not looking at how I'm going to be looking at on the screen. So I'm just looking at my slide and my job. So I uh, would actually, um, you know, on the webcams off, whenever you feel like actually wanting to see um, uh, see the thought process or the, the feeling that I have, um, I have great attribution to, uh, to, uh, to, to, the, to the job that I do. And when, it, when I got the subject of measuring the campaign, only one thing strike my mind. Is it going to be unit clicks? Is it going to be number of uh, percentage of deliverability that encountered on an email? Or is it going to be the CTA or, uh, you know, uh, methodology measurement that we need to look at? Now, if you ask uh, most of the MBAs or IIMs, 
they normally look up. They normally look up. They just want to see uh, how the statistic uh, report looked like. They wanted to evaluate uh, what happened, what what was the uh, insights on the on the analytics, and they they float on the on the surface, but never get to the bottom. But unfortunately, the gravitational force actually pulls down every evidence on the ground. So we probably have to look at uh, some of the numbers that we uh, uh, that we got in as the behavior, as the <clears throat> as the outcome. To identify the root cause problems, we will have to look down. So let's look down on what causes some of the challenges, and then we will look at the measurements as well. Uh, when we uh, did a few surveys, and in my experience, I've been talking to a lot of marketers, I've been talking to a lot of ISP providers, I've been talking to uh, uh, clients who uh, really receive those emails. One of the concern was uh, that you won't believe the ISPs acknowledge that 80,000 phishing emails is what they encounter on a on a single month or on a single day. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so that's that's a, that's a huge amount of number. And when you take a look at how uh, Google or uh, Gmail or Hotmail and Yahoo uh, providers work on, they want to retain their own customer base. And if uh, if we are switching off uh, with 80,000 80, uh, phishing emails on a particular ISP provider, they probably are looking at a Gmail account. So we wanted to check what really goes in to actually understand the deliverability. So we uh, ended up uh, identifying three different areas, which is, which is predominantly your authentication. And when it comes to authentication, there are a few checks that they do. And they also look at your reputation. They also look at your content that you're sending in. And most importantly, they are also looking at the kind of engagement that you created after the campaign was rolled out. Uh, did you have uh, greater uh, uh, open rates? Did you have better click-through rates? Did you engage the customer on different mediums? These are some of the evaluations that the ISPs do. Uh, we will discuss that in, uh, in a little more detail uh, when we get on to uh, a day's program because I have a lot of slides. Trust me, you are in for a treat. Anybody in this afternoon who is not on, on this particular webinar is missing out on a lot of things. I'm not stating this because uh, you're right there. It, it, is, it, it is a fact because the kind of research that we've done and the kind of insights that you'll be getting in uh, during this webinar is really, really impactful. You can pick up the, uh, the, the statistics that is defined there and start using them immediately after the webinar is over. That's the kind of reporting that we've done. Uh, you're looking at a, a statistics of how the spam scores have been calculated and how the percentage has been uh, decreased over a period of time, but we still stand out. You are looking at India at 16.6% uh, .6 above the other, uh, other countries. So which means we are still spamming and consumers are still hitting the spam button, uh, probably by mistakes because 35% of them do not know how to unsubscribe. They are looking at... Uh, uh, the spam folder button, which says report spam, but not clicking on the unsubscribe button. So that's uh, that's the India there. So we are moving forward. The entire process, I'm not going to actually uh, dig down to the elements of uh, deliverability, but however, this is how the deliverability looks like. So the sooner you hit the send button, it is actually going into a few checks. And the few checks are your authentication, the first check. And once you pass the authentication, which is probably your uh, SPF records, your sender ID, your DKIM, uh, you will have to actually get this done and make sure that you uh, have this configured on all of the IP addresses that you use. If you're using a third party provider, which is an ESP provider, you probably want to get in touch with him and ask him if you have a dedicated IP or a dynamic IP. Um, because the reputation matters a lot for your brand and also for uh, your uh, ISPs to track down what kind of messages that you've been sending and how, what is the engagement that, uh, that, that people uh, encounter when you send out a campaign. So after you pass the authentication, it moves back to your reputation. And when you're looking at the reputation, they are looking at a lot, a lot of, lot of things. The volume of emails that you send, the kind of message that you send, the kind of uh, relevancy that you create in your customers, uh, the timing that you send in, these are some of the evaluations that goes in the back end and also the number of complaints uh, that they have received from the consumers who have hit the subscribe or unsubscribe button and the spam folder button. So after the evaluation of your reputation, 
it decides again to the, the Barracuda and various other firewalls and the corporations. If it is not the firewalls there, uh, it directly gets into the inbox. And if the consumer doesn't like it, he automatically moves that inbox to your junk folder. That is also being evaluated because Microsoft uh, Outlook or various other applications that you use is actually sending away reports to uh, the ISPs. So everything depends on the kind of message that you're sending in. Consumers are getting really, really powerful. You're looking at a, a, a triangle <coughs> which uh, surprisingly uh, looks very similar to the one that I had. Uh, trust me, I haven't dropped this, drafted this, but uh, I, I picked it up because uh, one of the things that my teacher has taught me is, uh, or over the period of time that I've learned, is that you don't have to really hold everything together, but you just need to know where to find them. And I'm very good at it. You'll very soon know that. And uh, coming back to this particular slide here, you're looking at uh, the inbox and you're looking at a marketing uh, perspective, a marketer, how he views his uh, activities on an email, and you're looking at a subscriber on what he thinks uh, of an email that he receives. So the marketer looks at it from uh, getting notice. So he has a great subject line. He uh, makes sure that the uh, deliverability is done. So it is, it's the inbox. But the consumer is actually looking at the subject line. If it is interesting, he's taking it. If it is not, he's deleting it. And then probably after he opens, he's actually skimming through the process uh, of the content to find out what is in it for me. Uh, is it uh, some offer? Is it because uh, I am a unique customer for this particular brand? that I got this campaign? Uh, or do I have nothing? Or is it just a promotion me message saying, hey, this is available, just buy? Uh, Marketeer actually wants them to click through to some call to actions that are defined there clearly. And uh, the, uh, the call to action must be uh, in accordance to what the consumers are thinking. If it is, they get the click through. If uh, they get the click through and land on the landing page and the landing page is really interesting, they make the purchase. So that's the triangle. Here's an interesting one. So when a marketer, as, as a marketer, you and me act, actually have to decide on what is it So when you're looking at the context, you're uh, looking at I, a promotional uh, campaign, we're looking at uh, making him feel good. Uh, we want him to actually stop you click here? on the call to action buttons, which is your triggers. And when you, yeah. yeah, Nidhi, actually when you started with this slide, the voice went off. So if you could just uh, uh, start again with this, this same slide will be good for all of us. All right, perfect. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, was the audio not very clear? All right, I'm dependent on a third party, which is probably the internet connection, probably go to meeting and a lot of other people. But come to my session, you probably will get to see me in action and then you probably will get the actual 100% download uh, because this is not a torrent site. This is a uh, a uh, pure one-to-one uh, -one, uh, conversation. All right, looking at this slide, we're looking at a context. A context is nothing but an environment, uh, a, a particular campaign that we wanted to roll out to make the customer feel good. Or is it to make it to, to buy? Okay, Niti, uh, your voice is breaking yeah. again. So I, I would I would suggest you can Niti, can you hear me? Depending on the marketing plan and the strategy for this particular day, it's a very state. It's a Wednesday and what we want our customers to do. Do we have a typical campaign that rolls out? Because I know a case that 
talk for cyber consumer everywhere. Yeah. Niti, can you hear me? All right. Somebody Niti? has to do the now. Oh, oh, I can yeah, hear you your now. Vo your voice okay, was perfect. breaking again. So that's so. the trigger. The trigger could be. I'm sorry. So let's let's cut the camera off because uh, that, that's how I look. I uh, I'm not from Africa, but I'm from Bangalore, and I look a little dark. And I um, I'm losing air because I'm getting a little older. So don't worry about it. Uh, imaginatively okay. create a picture and animate my picture there, as in when I speak a word out, and you'll get my picture there. So don't worry about it. Um, coming back to the triggers, the now. triggers could be. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, triggers could be the call to action. Triggers could be a picture that strikes out an image, uh, an, an association inside the customer's mind. It could be a happy mind because we are happily drinking off chemical water just because they labeled it uh, happy tea, happiness. So we are okay to pick up a Coke bottle and say we are creating happiness and actually losing all our teeth. Um, so that's the trigger and, and the state of mind. When we are looking at, a, at the state of mind, we're looking at whether we are creating a happy mode, are we give, giving him a festival mode, are we giving him a vacation mode, what is the mode that we want the customer to be in when we roll out a campaign? And what's the behavior? How do you You will expect him to land on the landing. Hit the unsubscribe button, delete the button, close the landing page, and exit off in a few seconds. Or would you like him like him to spend some time, subscribe your uh, newsletter, fill up a form, or make the purchase and, and walk out? So this triangle is very very important for us to as marketers to understand while we are drafting a content, even if it's a creative content, even if it's an HTML normal text campaign, it's very very important. And it is also very important for us to actually shift our mind and state of mind while we are into a class or while we are attending a webinar, while we are picking up a newsletter, a white paper, or, uh, or a download that we did just now, and a book that we picked up. It is very, very important to have the mindset, which is the state of curiosity, to understand what are the other marketers doing? How are ISPs thinking? What are ESPs uh, doing out there? And how, is, how can I improvise my deliverability? So in my training, uh, I actually have incorporated a few pseudo characters that you can uh, you can jump into and quickly change your state of mind. You can do that. Uh, by, you can actually see Shah Rukh Khan do that. You can actually be, uh, see uh, while he walks into a stage, he takes about five to seven seconds to actually shift more, shift uh, the state of mind. And then he's happy. And then he's uh, charming. He's cheerful. He's actually attracting the crowd and makes the 100 crores. And similarly, as marketers, we will have to shift our minds when we're looking at a particular target sector. If we are in an automotive industry, if we are in a, a manufacturing unit, if we are in advertising and marketing, the mind or the, the situation demands us to be in different state of mind to identify how the customer would behave at a certain, a certain point of time when we roll out a campaign. So here's it, switch your minds, change your state of mind as you sit down and relax and, and look at the slides you get more comfortable and get deeper into uh, into a feeling where you feel that curiosity to dig more because there is something that is very valuable that is coming towards the end digital buyers are actually moving ahead and they have immense power they have uh, uh, the power to opt to ox they have the power to report spam they have the power to actually pick up the postmaster and write to the isps the consumers expectations are really really high so if I'm making an offer, which the competition is also making, I am. Uh, I was looking at a, 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 a newsletter that came in yesterday from Brand Village. It had a beautiful image, uh, just a just just a blank, point blank image and no text at all. Now I was wondering if my iPad wasn't uh, loading up the image, what would have happened? And I was also curious to know what would the consumers look like, or what are they thinking when this this particular campaign rolled out. Now, right, so they're looking at trustworthiness and how do we build them? You're going to actually get them down. Um, they don't send the Christmas message out. And if I'm looking at Ganesha Chaturthi, don't send the Diwali message out. So they're looking at the relevancy. They're also looking at, I'm a cricket fan lover, and I will also show you how you can pick up those uh, likes and dislikes on the social media page to actually build a beautiful persona of the person that you're talking to. You can actually pick up any type of patterns. You don't have to pay a single rupee to anyone. No, no paid logins, no nothing. Just, just pure search. You can be the master. You can be the ninjas of tomorrow. Uh, as we, uh, uh, you know, get, get in further, we will get you that uh, the knowledge base as well. 
and let the message be conversational. It's just not the social media that needs to be, you know, two ways. Email can also be two ways. We have some people are doing. Um, the channels are changing. It is dynamic. It is changing every minute as we speak right now, because uh, six months, uh, six months of dedication on a site with a few keywords. Uh, telling me, saying, I will have to monitor this and make sure that it is available on search engine. Uh, Google makes the band up. All right, things go wrong. And I have lost the six months of work. Google makes a penguin update, and I'm lost again. So the dynamic, uh, you know, uh, there's the platform, that the medium that we're working on. So we will also have to quickly shift and make sure that we are uh, apt in following the, um, the other mediums as well. So here's a question. Why would you want to sign up? And 95% of them say, I sign up because I need uh, discounts. Now the B2B market is, please don't uh, de you know, eject out. It, it is for you too. Because if they're looking at discounts, they're probably looking at a white paper. They're looking at a technical document that can help them make the decision. How do people think? People think in images. People think in auditory, which is your words. People also think in, in the feelings that, that we leave them. All these three things put together. They are creating a feeling, and the feeling better be a good one because uh, they have to land up on your landing page and do the conversion as well. So this is what 95% of them said, and why would they want uh, a promotional message soon after they, um, you know, uh, they, if they didn't sign up on the emails? 76% of them say do not want companies to send them promotional emails if they did not request it, and this is a this is a strange thing for any marketer because. We will have to talk to as many strangers as possible and then move them to be our uh, prospects and talk to as many prospects as possible to become their, uh, in, for, for them to become our customers. And we'll have to talk to as many customers as possible for them to be our, um, our promoters. Now, how do we talk to strangers? We will get there soon. How many personal email addresses do you have? And there uh, you go. And people say, wow, this is a uh, great number. Now, how am I going to actually know which email is he clicking and what time is he clicking? Dell did a beautiful campaign, and I'm sure people who have seen that Dell campaign uh, based on the timing would, would already uh, in, not now because that, that was a real good campaign. The case study is anyway, of course, shared in the, in the one-day training program. Um, we don't have that right now. but. Uh, you can take a look at it, send it to but the challenge of information would you share? And this, these are all the global statistics, so you don't have to really worry about um, uh, whether this will be applicable for India, geography. Um, after Ocean 9, I think we will have to, uh, the book called Ocean 9, the concept was that if the marketers are looking at uh, just one bucket, um, the, the answer is no, you shouldn't be, you've got to be uh, walking out of your vertical and look at the other verticals on what those people are doing and learn we better learn from them and, and identify how to actually pick up those. Mr. Piyush Pandey would agree on this because most of the creatives are coming in from the United States for him to transform to the uh, geography that he's working on and he creates a great campaign and it's on IPL TV all right various other te television as well. All right do you expect a welcome message and 75% of them say yes I do and that's a great thing to actually move them uh, back to your social media site we will also show you how to actually use that there uh, because um, we know very clearly that social media is the one that is picking up the larger uh, time spent so we better use them effectively I might be a little fast here because uh, uh, because of my time because I have loads and loads of things uh, to be shared uh, but unfortunately uh, unfortunately I have a very less time there. Right. You actually had a retailer to your subscriber base and the answer is 70% of them say I don't like to. Now in spite of your email campaign saying please add me on, please add me on, very less people actually add on. So we will have to really be impactful, we will have to make them really feel good to actually get there and say add me on. I'm your friend. All right, what would you like to share on the social media site was one of the questions, and here's what they have to say. They share a web page, they share an email, they, they, um, they actually say, uh, some people say, not media as well. 
and you will be surprised to see uh, people clicking on the social media are looking at a picture and not a text. So how can we really uh, cope up with that, that particular challenge? Do you have a mobile device? Okay, do you wish to use a mobile device to sort out emails first? And 69% of them say, yes, I do. I sort them out and then actually read them on the desktop. So <laughs> our creatives better be uh, designed for uh, the newer generation. Samsung actually has uh, most of the volume uh, taken in from, uh, from India, but uh, if, uh, if the target market is the United States, it better be iPhone. Uh, because iPhone actually has a larger market share. We will share some of these insights as well in, you know, in, in some of the training programs that we will have in sport. If you get an email that doesn't look good, what would you do? Perfect. The answer is I would just discard them. And would you actually, uh, some people actually unsubscribe them too, because if you continue doing that uh, over, and, uh, over and over again, so that means uh, either you're not listening to me and you're not uh, bothered about uh, what, what really uh, triggers me. All right, would you click through an email? Uh, uh, view an email on link which says if it is visible. And surprisingly, 50% of them say, but this geography is uh, United States. So I'm looking at India being, uh, being the answer being no, because I, I don't want to, if it is really, really, really good, uh, till then it better be uh, loading up on the platform itself. Uh, does your uh, does, the, does the poor design email affect your perception of the brand? Oh my God, you can take a look at it. So if my logo is not uh, not properly placed, and if my subject line is not properly drafted in or slightly negative, um, the design is so pathetic. And some sometimes I get an email on the on the iPhone, and it really looks really really odd. Uh, it is supposed to be a responsive design, and it is the text is not legible at all. So I, I don't know how the responsive design that was. Uh, we will give you more insights on uh, that as we uh, as we go forward. So if you're using a QR code, better not. It's, it's okay to avoid them because none of them uh, know how to use them. So 23% of them say, we haven't used it, use them. And 33.2% of, of them ask you a question saying, what's a QR code? Could you please explain? On an email, it's, it's a big no-no, is what we hear from the statistics, not me saying. Um, how likely are you to buy an item or a service uh, from an email uh, that you read on a mobile device? And 50% of them say, I would buy it. And this is, this is true uh, for anyone who's actually using a social media medium to actually move them to an e-commerce site and actually make the, uh, make the buyer buy there. Consumers unsubscribe for, your, for an email if it, is, uh, if, if it is relevant. If it is not, uh, I mean, uh, relevancy, if, if it is not relevant to that particular uh, person or the target market, they probably are hitting the unsubscribe button. And believe me, 44% of them are actually getting this spam bag at all. all. Right. So if you are given an option to actually change the timing, the change the frequency of uh, of my newsletter, how many would opt in? 41 person say I would do that because I would need my preferences, and that's when uh, he he feels that he's empowered and he's in control uh, of the complete game. So as marketers, we would have to look at that particular insight and make sure that we adopt to that piece too. Okay, here's the interesting one, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, take a look at the kind of open rates that you're getting in from uh, various uh, geography. And this is gonna be an eye opener for all of us because each of these industry sectors are actually uh, guaranteeing these many uh, click-throughs. And this is a new uh, insight. Uh, you may want to actually uh, read through them the slides will be available and accordingly draft your campaigns and expect. Uh, if you're looking at a greater measurement, I am not going to give you the calculation, but I would like you to actually do the calculation first on the percentages that you're looking at and see what you would expect out of this particular, uh, particular campaign. Here's a gross open rate by industry and you can see education is actually on the highest. So <laughs> if you one of the news that I read about, they wanted to uh, keep their emails in such a manner that it educates the customer uh, about, their, about their products, about their services, and about the operation and the processes that, that are in place with, with uh, Info USA. So you may want to look at uh, that piece as well, though it is an education sector. I'm looking at it from an educational point of view because people love it. People love to be uh, uh, knowing a few things. Click-through rates, 
here's your percentage of, uh, of the Asia pack. You can take a look at it, which is uh, 7.1. And click through rates uh, based on the, on the industries uh, that are defined there as well. Education stands out again. Consumer product and services is falling down. So you may uh, actually want to open your eyes and see what uh, could be done to actually get that up. Uh, here's another statistics. All right. And the message. Exercise. Very, very important. If you and actually reach the other end of the client, Asia Pack actually has 20.9 kilobytes. That's the weightage of your email. So if you want to actually look at it from the perspective on how will I know what is the size of it, the designer who's sitting down and actually coding this HTML out, you probably want to ask him what size it is coming out uh, out as. And when you load that into a, into a content called constant contact or a MailChimp or any other ESP providers, you probably want to check what's the size because we are the highest there. And it's supposed to be lesser than that. Uh, we're going to actually show you some of those as well. You can take a look at uh, what is the highest maximum size there. The nonprofits actually use 40.5 kbps and making it really, really impossible for uh, deliverability there. Uh, for any ISPs to actually note that or uh, trigger that as a as a spam copy and drop the ratio of deliverability. Hard bounces and 3.7. Again, we have the highest, probably because we are harvesting and doing a, a literal campaign without even testing it to see if the ID is working or not. And my God, it's it's actually uh, free. Uh, there are uh, close to around uh, 10 to 12 uh, websites which offers you free uh, check. On every email address that you can uh, that you can harvest. So we are not telling you don't harvest because I'm though uh, though I'm a, an inbound marketer and I profess that we we'll have to be inbound. But one of the questions is that I always wonder is that I cannot refuse myself from not talking to strangers because that's where my cycle begins. I will have to talk to a lot of strangers in order to get them to uh, like my product, be my prospect. But how do I do that strategically? Uh, is there a way? Is there a plan? Is there a way that I can avoid from the ISPs being noted that I am harvesting and then still rolling out a campaign? You would love that story. You probably want to be on that particular day uh, when we do this training on the on the 25th, and we want to actually share those insights with you. And subscribes 0.26 percent. It's it's huge again. One person is huge. So we may want to actually try and see how the relevancy and the trustworthy of the brand is actually maintain while we uh, choose a picture, like, while we choose the content um, to actually avoid this particular thing happening. All right, spam complaints. All right, that's again 0 0.05, which is okay compared to, so which means India is actually having great uh, educated consumers who are actually clicking on the unsubscribe and not the spam complaints. All right, coming back to the best practices, here's a message that was uh, uh, not personalized and it was just said, uh, dear subscriber, uh, thank you very much for signing in. Click here and buy the product. And let me know what's your life cycle pattern and then I will decide on uh, whether you're a worthwhile customer or not. But here's another one which actually had a, a first name incorporated. So every list that was incorporated inside it also had a first name saying, Dear Nathi, please come here. This is what I have to do. Thank you very much for purchasing this particular product and on this particular date and it is getting closer and closer and I love it because it's personalized. It is actually telling me what I uh, actually want. And how do we improvise our slide though? Because you may want to actually take some time out to see what uh, is different in this particular landing page of this. And uh, you can see the, the, the pointers which says very clearly, very clear, transparent communication saying click and save. So, and also uh, ding today. And and there is a special offer with the staff to just fill up four, thing, four details and you're on. And that's how the brands are actually building the trustworthiness. All right, no size fits all and I am not old, so I don't want to look at a 60 year old on my campaign, but I want to look at the youth couple. Uh, so I customize my segment, uh, my list based on the demographics of the, uh, of the individual and then use pictures and images that might trigger an association for them, a happy association, just like the Coke does, because 
cooked us very well because I have lost a few to, you know uh, teeth and I actually am uh, against that chemical water, but I can't stop drinking because it makes me happy, or at least that's what the the promotional campaign says, and it has to be conversational. Here's here's how they uh, the fab uh, guys do the campaign and make it conversational. They probably ask, what would you like to have this drink and and some some of the questions that triggers them to actually answer them. And that lands up as a, as a feedback, and that is back again on the persona development. And there is a list segmentation. Is this a huge process? Can one single individual do it, or a team of people do? Can, can they do this effectively, or should we depend on the software? Because if deliverability is taken care of, understanding the authentication, reputation, and also the content filters, I'm sure there's no human doing it, but there's an automated system that's doing it. You'll be Price to know there are a lot of tools you know, helping you, giving you the leverage to actually use them effectively on a day-to-day -day campaign, and also segment your data based on the psychography of the of the of the individual. That's the behavior that he does on the email campaign. Here's a beautiful thing. So I, if I am spending six hours on the on the on the social media page, or uh, uh, that's that's really too high. It's probably two and a half hours uh, roughly. Uh, per individual. So if I am doing that and my one of my campaign or the segmentation is based on uh, the user who's actually on social media. So here's another level of segmentation. We're looking at a list of people who, are, who also have a social media ID and we know that these people come online at a particular time. We roll out a campaign at that time, they trigger that particular landing page, reach them to the social media page where they would love to actually do that. They, they come there and there's an offer made and there is also an email subscribe button. So you don't have to really look at a landing page for subscribe a subscription. You probably can use the social media tools that are available. Here's a quick look on uh, what Marketo does. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a, a quick look on the number of hours that is being spent uh, by the team to actually look at each of these sectors before they roll out a campaign. Uh, we're looking at 103, uh, uh, 123 hours spent on a monthly basis, and the creative team takes 20% of it, segmentation team and targeting team takes about 13% of it, strategy, uh, the, the, the strategy that these people build in actually takes 22% of it. So which means they, they need black coffees and white papers and, and, and a lot of other trigger, triggered mechanism to actually understand based on the list that we have, based on the timings that we have with all these inputs, can I create a better strategy? So the strategy is right on, on using these uh, mediums, you are getting greater returns from your email because email is not going to go away. Um, yeah, we would consider that as Reka. Rekasi, or probably Mumbai people will be able to understand this. They are actually broken, which is uh, which is probably your uh, uh, your emails. No, they they aren't. They're getting upgraded. They're coming back. And uh, Vidya Balan is doing great, which is your social media. Social media will get some traction, but again, if you use both of them, the impact is really really powerful. We'll teach you that. All right, here's my best, best, best uh, subject, and I would love to actually do this before I jump in. How do we search better? Now, the reports that you just looked at, I never bought it. Okay, uh, I'm just an honest marketer here because I, I just don't pay anything, uh, anything before I um, really see the value and I don't get it online. Um, I wait for the Iron Man 3 to be released on pirated sites to before, before it comes online, uh, before it uh, hits the data, and then see if the copy is good, and then I, I download it. So that's, that's been my training to trigger that state of mind, which makes me hunt down any information that I need when I want it. My teacher taught me this, and she has been very clear saying, Lieutenant, if there are corporations that you want to reach out to, you better find them online. And I'm going to teach you that as well, because search engine is my playground. And I treat that with, uh, with great responsibility because uh, the more webs I can spread and the more I can fly, I'm going to make uh, a lot of mistakes. Um, but you will get uh, a little more insights on this, but I'm not going to show you that uh, piece of information here. But what I can do is actually show you a small demo of uh, how we can pick up strangers. 
a search is an art uh, we call it a skill and a skill is transferable which means you and me can learn this quickly and easily and uh, hit your hit, hit your office with the curiosity with the cleverness and actually uh, implement them in your day to day activity and also uh, understand the the way that uh, uh, customers like and dislike because social media is also available on Google search as well um, here's a demo I'm going to open up my browser browser so if anyone is not able to see it please uh, raise a uh, show a raise of hand <coughs> and couple we will coordinate that because I'm not looking at what is happening okay just give me a sure. second my Firefox is opening Actually, I'm working on a Mac, but still it is slow. Uh, I'll have to talk to Stevie, uh, Steve Jobs, and unfortunately he's not around. There's another guy called Tim. I don't know what he's doing, so <laughs> bear with me for a moment. Or yeah, not able I'm to see not, you. I'm actually getting browsers. All right, the, the, the giveaway is Mr. Couple, uh, just a second. I am just going to open up the Google and I'm going to actually show you the screen. So on the, on the Twitter account, we heard people say, hey, give us some statistics. And I, I think we've fed enough statistics today um, because if you have attended any other webinars, Digital Vidya is doing a great job in actually coordinating uh, and picking up uh, good minds to actually share the knowledge and I would love to be there and, and actually do this for you. Here's your search engine. Okay, and I am looking for a particular person. So I have created a pseudo person, probably, uh, let us see who that person is, probably Priya. Priya Pal. Okay, and Priya Pal is probably on LinkedIn. And I'm going to actually look at. At this particular screen and she's on LinkedIn okay okay so you're looking at Priya Pal um, long time back there was a button called cache um, that Google removed now and there was a button when you were placed the mouse over the right panel actually displayed a lot of things but that is taken over now maybe taken out so we can't really look at the cache files if anyone out there, the um, 100 people that subscribe for or the 45 people uh, uh, that they uh, are supposed to be joining us in, uh, if you have noticed that if you can read the cache file good enough, you probably have every information that Priya, Priya is, is up to. You can take a look at it. She's a media partner, so that's probably one of the reasons why I opted uh, Priya there. And what can we do with uh, Priya's email address? I would want to actually quick get, uh, quickly get uh, Priya's email address. I want to actually roll out a campaign and tell her saying, hey, we have great office, uh, sign on. And here's what happens when I use my search engine a little effectively. All right, surprise. You can take a look at those. Here's your Priya Pal's email address. And it is uh, on search engine. We haven't hit Google. Uh, we haven't hit uh, LinkedIn. We haven't paid uh, paid a single rupee uh, as a subscriber, uh, but we have the email addresses, and, and we are not hacking in because we are not pinging the LinkedIn uh, servers, but we are actually pinging Google servers to actually pick up the cached file. So that's the that's the uh, lead sourcing. And if I want to quickly extract this information now, and I want to roll out a campaign, I just go here and I open up uh, Google and I type in surf7 okay this is a little funny site so I, I still don't get to uh, remember what that is right, it's going to show up all right it's a free uh, email extractor loading up okay right there so here's a box it says surf please paste I paste it and I say extract uh, all my email addresses are right there on that particular page. So I roughly have around 10 people belonging to uh, to the marketing sector. And uh, I wish I could show you the codes, but I won't be able to do that unless you come on to the 25th uh, uh, 
uh, 25th um, workshop, we will investigate this. We have roughly around 45 minutes for you to actually just try around uh, this particular uh, lead sourcing me uh, mechanism, which is no APIs, nothing. But you will have to use them effectively. Now, I would love to take some questions, and I can do that on social media as well. So if you are looking at, uh, can we do this on uh, Facebook? You bet we can. So we have the codes for um, uh, Facebook too, because uh, something that we don't uh, don't depend on is uh, the reliability of uh, the paid login logins. So if I log into LinkedIn today and I pay premium, uh, the only thing that they promise is third degree connection. You will be able to get them. Uh, apart from that, you won't be able to see any of those uh, email addresses. But Priya, I don't know who Priya is, and what happens if Priya doesn't accept my uh, invite? So I'm probably losing her. So uh, in order to reach out to her, this is the best easy way. And I call it uh, Digjutsu, which is your martial art technique to actually pick up. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, leave this uh, for forum for any questions. So we will have roughly around another 10 minutes um, before our presenter kicks me off. OK, so uh, thanks, Niti, for uh giving us a comprehensive view of email marketing and uh, explaining in bits and pieces all the elements that are involved while we are doing anything related to email marketing. So uh, before I, uh, there are a couple of questions that we have already received. So guys, now if you have any questions, you can just mention it in the question section. Uh, some of you are asking whether the recording of this session would be available to you. Yes, the recording would be available. We'll send you an email uh, within the next couple of days. So the first question that I have is, uh, you know, as Digital Vidya, we have been sending out various kinds of emails to our opt-in email database, which includes newsletters, webinar invites, our sales-oriented emailers, and other stuff. So one thing that we have noticed is that when we start a kind of a new kind of an emailer, the performance is very good. But over a period of time, the performance really comes down. So is there some kind of a, a study being done on at what frequency one should change the email format or like anything that you want to suggest us in this, in this regard? A uh, couple is that question for me? Yes, it, the question is for I you. I don't hear you. Yeah, I. You did not get my question. Oh, uh, uh, right. Uh, could you please repeat that question because I lost. Sure. Uh, so what I the question is that uh, you know uh, when we uh, use no, any particular I format. Exactly. Okay. Couldn't tell so your the question is when we use uh, clear or not. Okay, so should I repeat the question now? Niti, are you there? Okay, you. okay all right. So. You just said. Oh uh, yes, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, so the you. question is that uh, when we use a new email format, right? The performance mm -hmm. is very good, but over a period of time, it comes comes down, and it comes down significantly. So do you, do you have any? like experience or any study being done in this regard regarding at what frequency one should think of changing the email format or template. All right, so what happens is what I, how I understand the question is, uh, before you trigger my knowledge base, I'd love to understand the question, right? So here's what I understand. So you are, are trying to use a different email which is really good and then over a period of time, it, it drops down. OK, now here's what my understanding is or my experience. When you're picking up an email address or registering a different domain, you probably are picking up a different IP address. And um, the whole responsibility is with the guy who's hosting it and who's giving you that particular IP address. And if that IP address Address is a brand new IP thousand per or your campaigns will go very well. And the minute you figure out that the campaigns are going well on a thousand records, you pick up a million record or a fifty thousand record and roll out a campaign. And there's huge, huge uh, hard bounces on that particular campaign. 
immediately the ISPs, the spam houses, and along with your EAP. Anything I'm not able to hear you. The provider will get to know that you're spamming. And there you go. Automatically, your reputation takes a beat. And simply, this one of the inside uh, talks about this uh, in detail. <coughs> okay, just bear with me. Got it. Because it is important for you to see. Uh, and uh, the believing, seeing is believing. Okay, I, I work like that, so let's see it. Okay, got it. So, uh, I mean, definitely, if it's something right. that is affecting the reputation of the server and the IP address, exactly. uh, we'll definitely That's, check that this out. Is, this is That is correct. Here's, here's, a, here's a, a slide which says that you have procured a new IP address and there's absolutely no campaign that you have rolled out. You're perfect. You're good. And your reputation is neutral. And the minute you start firing out campaigns like this, you turn red, which is malicious, and ISPs will block you off. And after that, your, your dropouts will happen quickly. And how many ISPs have actually uh, turned, uh, turned their uh, you know, systems on? I'm going to get you that slide as well. Just a minute. Here's your service providers. These people are all on the upgrade, which means they're changing quickly. And while they upgrade, you will have to upgrade as well. So all this and more in the in the one-day training program. Join us. You'll get you'll learn more. Got it. Got it. Sure. So definitely, you're giving me score to you. Got enough encouragement to join it. Okay, so there are a couple of more questions. One is asked by Devajit. Devajit is saying that, uh, you know, the recently uh, Gmail has added uh, some new features, uh, which is like they're categorizing emails into different categories, primary, social, and promotion. Do you think that's going to impact the way we think about email marketing mm -hmm. campaign? Uh, what are your takes on that? Okay. Uh, um, all right. That, it's nice uh, things, but one doesn't exist in 2013, and what we are going to see in 2017 doesn't exist in 2013. We'll be looking at how I can leverage till the the, the search engines are not updated, and how I can use the marketing right away. And in about years time or four years time down the line, I'll figure another new newer game because my strategy will depend on the kind of changes that the mediums are doing, and I will accordingly uh, adapt myself to that and fly, because I would not uh, wait for anybody else to control me, but I would carry my own weather. All right, over to you, couple. Got it. <clears throat> Okay, I'm uh, lost so you guys. guys uh, by the time I'm actually taking up more questions, um, I'm launching a poll question in front of you. So uh, you know that as Digital Vidya, we conduct digital marketing training, and email marketing training is one of them. So if you want to participate <coughs> in the digital, our digital marketing training, you can just mention yes over here, and someone from our team will call you and uh, will take your requirements and accordingly suggest you appropriate options. And we have the whole range of the trainings available with us. So by the time you are uh, responding to this, uh, let me take up some more questions. <clears throat> um, by the way, guys, a lot of you are complaining that the audio quality is not good today. I completely agree with you. And my apologies for the same. And we'll try to make sure that from next time onwards, uh, we are getting it rectified before the session. Um, so uh, a lot of you are also asking us to suggest which is the what is the exact way Priya's email ID was extracted. Uh, see, the idea was this is the whole concept wherein uh, 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 you can use search engines to extract out the data that is available on LinkedIn to search. And uh, how to really create various search queries? It's actually not possible to cover in the one-hour session, and we would need to 
talk about various tasks before you really get it correctly and that's the reason um, I mean it, I, I personally suggest it would be good if you can come and attend the program you would probably get it right so the, we're, we're launching it in Mumbai right now but very soon there would be an online session and the session in Delhi and Bangalore as well so uh, those of you who are located at different location will have an opportunity to attend that. So I'm not taking question regarding the extraction process of Priya's email ID, which has been asked by some of you. Uh, okay, so let me see if there are. Okay, so there is a question asked by uh, Sharmi. Uh, she's saying, what happens when you want to launch a product and you, and you do not have a database? How can you reach out to the database of new people? So, uh, I mean, we've been talking about uh, deliverability and related aspects uh, to your existing email list. And uh, in a way, uh, uh, Niti has touched upon uh, what are the ways you can extract out new email IDs through search engine. Uh, so, uh, Niti, is there like, is this some kind of other ways or if you want to elaborate on this on like someone who is planning to launch a new product and they do not have a database, how should they strategize the whole plan? Okay, um, Sh Shami, that's a that's a long process, and I'll have to sit down with uh, with you guys to actually understand what your strategies are to take this product, and what is the kind of target market that you're looking at. But uh, uh, data is available. To you. Niti, your voice is not clear today. Anything, your voice is not audible at all. I'm, I'm extremely sorry about this internet connection. There seems to be a 400 years connection and one more. Kapil, can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm not sure. I was not able to get the response properly. Is it some issue at my end or probably your end? Uh, so there were there are a few more questions that have been asked. Uh, one is uh, uh, the question by Anmol. Uh, he wants to know more about spamming, mm -hmm. and uh, so if you can elaborate a little bit more on that regard, it would be good. All right. Uh, okay, Anmol, um, you said spamming. Okay, now, um, okay, define the spam for me. Anything that is non relevant, anything that uh, is done without their permission, is probably spamming. Now let's take a look at uh, how the laws define this uh, spamming activity. Now let's take a look. What does a can spam act very clearly state? Can Spam Act states very clearly that it is okay to actually pick up an email address of any individual, whether with permission or without permission, to express the interest or show them the promotional pitch that you have, marketing copy that you have, and you can roll out a campaign and to a person who's working in a corporate. But if it comes to personal email addresses, you probably want to avoid that. You could use a social media campaign if you establish a greater brand and the value is really seen by others. They tend to share that. And while they share it, they hit the like button. While they hit the like button, they are actually sharing every information. In an email, it is called subscribe. In a social media campaign, it is called a like. So when I hit the like button, I'm actually giving away all my details, including hobbies, likes, dislikes, and uh, the, the latest uh, news uh, post that I'm doing. Everything is right there with you if you use a social media platform for that particular uh, you know, activity. But if I'm talking to a corporation, it is okay to actually go out a campaign to them and express my interest saying this is what it is. 
and that's what the CAN spam law says. And here's another example. When Zoom Info was filed against uh, another consumer working in a corporation, saying that Zoom Info made the data available for public to download, the court's verdict was that it is okay to share a commercial email address with any promotional marketer and be, be, be known or be announced about the particular product, it norms. And the norms are make sure you have your snail mail address, make sure, make sure that you have the subject lines right, don't mislead the client, make sure that the unsubscribe buttons are visible, make sure that's a phone number to reach out to, make sure that the reply to button is there, and all of these activities. If you get the norms right, if you have a corporate email address, it is okay to write. And India, we don't have a lawyer as yet. So which means you can really talk to anyone in India right now and a corporate email address and express your interest. If they don't like it, they take them off the list so that the ISPs are also clear with you, with your activity. Got it. Right. I think I, that's I, a I, comprehensive I, enough answer. Anmul, I hope you've got your answer now. So guys, it's uh, 4.02 already um, and uh, uh, it's time we should close the session now. So really want to thank all of you for attending today's session and uh, those of you who have said yes to digital with their training. Um, in particular, we are launching an email marketing program in Mumbai soon. So we someone from our team will call you shortly and uh, would uh, take further details from you to complete the discussion <coughs> process. Uh, so thanks a lot everyone. Uh, thanks, Niti, for uh, taking out time and walking us through the whole nitty-gitties of email marketing. Thank you very much, Kapil. Thank you very much, audience. And you've been really great. And all the questions were really, really great. And I was happy sharing my knowledge uh, knowledge across. I am also available on LinkedIn. You can probably uh, subscribe or send me an invite, and I shall accept. And we shall exchange uh, thoughts because I'm here to actually teach, and I'll continue doing that. Thank you very much, and you have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.